Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we start the chapter 16 which is the development of organisms and continuity of life. And in first, uh, in the first uh, video we will discuss the reproduction, the two different uh, 16.1 and 16.2 which is asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction in plants. So this is the first video and we will be covering the first two uh, important topics which is 16.1 and 16.2. Now, as we look at the syllabus uh, of 16.1 and 16.2 here, we've got to talk of these two first. Now, the first thing is, is define mitosis. And mitosis is a type of cell division. Now, first of all, we have to understand what is cell division. Cell division means we've got one cell and it divides and forms two cells. So, this one's gone now. So the original one cell, parent cell, forms two daughter cells. So please understand first this, that the original one is gone. Now we have two cells. So originally what did we have? We had one cell. Now what has happened? This one's finished. Now we have two cells. And two cells are probably the same size. They might not have drawn to the same scale. And these two cells are called daughter cells. I think biologists are gender biased. So daughter cells, we don't call them son cells, surprisingly. So the parent cell and then we have daughter cells. So cell division is of two types. We say number one is mitosis. Cell division giving rise to genetically identical cells. Genetically identical cells means just not physically identical. Genetically identical is a clone. You see, when you uh, photocopy a page, it's just a physical copy of it. What we mean is that the, the cell, whichever genetic material was in this parent cell, whatever the number of chromosomes was, now the daughter cell also has the same number of chromosomes. This is what we say, genetically identical. This is the word we have to understand is, what do we mean by genetically identical? And then it says in the syllabus, in which the chromosome number is maintained and state the role of mitosis. So the first thing that we've got to understand is that the cells divide cell division. And what do we have? The original cell finishes off. And now we have two daughter cells. So the original cell has now divided into two. So this was the original, original cell. And so it's sort of divided into two and now we have this cell and this cell, two daughter cells. So I'm just trying to make you understand it. I'm trying to make you develop the uh, mental image of one cell dividing into two. Just like you divide an apple into two, but it doesn't become two apples. It becomes two halves of an apple. But here the cell divides into two and forms two daughter cells. So it says define mitosis as cell division, giving rise to genetically identical now what is the role of mitosis? We've got to talk about growth, repair of damaged tissue. Please remember it's not damaged cell, it's damaged tissue. Replacement of worn out cells. This is cells, worn out cells, replacement of worn out cells and asexual reproduction. So we need to understand why do we need cell division? Why do we need it for growth? Why do we need it for repair of damaged tissues? and replacement of worn out cells just like your your school shoe has got worn out the sole is all finished and it's torn in certain places or something so you need to replace your school shoes so you're going to throw these out and you're going to buy a new pair of shoes and then asexual reproduction which i'll talk about let's now talk about chromosome numbers because you know we've just talked about genetically identical cells now there's something which I'm surprised at when I check papers is that I see children writing 46 chromosomes in every cell. Well, every cell of our human body has 46 chromosomes. And even that is wrong because not every cell, red blood cells do not have a nucleus, so they have no chromosomes. So in a way it's wrong if you say every cell of the human body has 46 chromosomes. Now, first of all, I need you to understand is that the chromosome number is different for every species. 
so a buffalo has 60 that means 30 pairs and chromosomes are always in pair that's why you'll always have an even number a cat has 38 chromosomes which means half of it is 15 19 19 pairs cattle has 60 so 30 pairs dog has 78 so 39 pairs donkey has 62 so 31 pairs a goat has 60 so 30 pairs horse has 64 so 32 pairs humans have 46 humans have 46 so that means 23 pairs of chromosomes one pair of each you get from your mother and one from your father so you have pairs like i would say now i was i always say you know tell me what in your house is in pairs and you say i have a pair of black shoes i have a pair of white joggers i have a pair of gloves i have a pair of socks so things in your house which are in pairs let's think of all of them shoes socks gloves a pig has 38 so that means 15 and 4 19 pairs and the sheep has 54 so 27 pairs so every species every organism now here we only have the animals but even plants would have different numbers so a rose bush would have a different number of chromosomes a sweet pea would have a different number of chromosomes a gladiola would have a different number of chromosomes an oak tree would have a different number of chromosomes a mango tree would have a different number of chromosomes a potato plant would have a different number of chromosomes so please remember every species has a fixed number of chromosome and that is different it varies from species to species now let's look at the human chromosome. Now this is called a karyotype. When we take out the chromosomes from a cell, we break open the cell membrane and we take a break the nuclear membrane and we take out the chromosomes. We have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes means the same size, the same shape, the same length and they contain the genes for the same characteristics. So this is the first pair. This is the second pair. And this is the third pair. So we took them out and we arranged them, you know, from the longest to the shortest. And we as biologists numbered them. And uh, we've numbered this. So this is the first pair, second pair. So this is the sixth pair. Then the seventh pair, eighth pair, ninth pair, tenth pair, eleventh, twelfth, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You see they're becoming shorter. Seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, and 22. Now these are called body chromosomes. Why? Because they code for the body characteristics. And in technical terms, these are called autosomes. Autosomes. Now the 23rd pair is the one which is going to decide the gender of the human being. So if it is XY, the Y is a little shorter and the X is a little longer, then this is going to be a male human being. If they are both the same size, then we call it XX, and this is going to be a female. So first, please try to understand what is what are we saying when we say a human being and every cell of a human being has 46 chromosomes. So it is 23 pairs. The 22 pairs are all pairs, the actual pairs, like you have a pair of shoes, you have a black shoe, so the other shoe is the same color, the same size, the same buckle, wherever it's got shoelaces and both of them have got shoelaces. But the 23rd pair is a little odd because at times it is not the same uh, length. So if the one is shorter, then that means it's a Y chromosome. We as biologists call it a Y chromosome. And if it's an XY, then we call it a male human being. And if it is XX, the same size, then we call it a female human being will develop from this. Now another slide for you to just see, uh, I'm just trying to take you all to understand it a little better. So a male, and you can see here we have the XY, which is, you know, a little different. And then this is a female. And then you can see the other 22 pairs are all the same. But the 23rd pair here is now, I wanted to be comparing this 23rd pair and this 23rd pair. So this is XX and this would be a female and this is XY and this would be a male. So this is just a little concept which I want you to be clear about. And uh, as long as you're clear on this, you'll be fine 
in understanding this chapter and the next chapter which is on inheritance. Another diagram just to make you see the different chromosomes and of course they are in different colors. They have been of course uh, given different colors by the computer and then you can see this is the XY and this is of course going to be a male. So these chromosomes are from a male. Now I want you to pause the video here, look at this diagram and try to understand here what we are trying to say is that you know in mitosis what happens. Now for instance this is the parent cell, it has four chromosomes. Now we also call this word diploid. Four is a diploid number and diploid is also represented as 2n. So 2n is equal to 4 means that the diploid number of this whatever organism is 4 chromosomes. So there are two pairs only. So you can see there's one blue pair and there's one red pair which we've shown in this diagram. Now what happens is that the first the chromosomes will duplicate or the other word that we use is replicate. Replicate means it forms an exact replica. So replicate. Now from four, now we have eight chromatids. These are not called chromosomes anymore. They're called chromatids now. And then you see, you see how they have separated at cell division. And then we've got the same number in the two new daughter cells which are identical to the parent cell. So if the chromosome number was four, then it has to double and that is called chromosome is called DNA replication in which the chromosomes exact copies are made. And that is called DNA replication because chromosomes are made up of DNA. So DNA replication takes place and then they line at the equator and we are not going to talk about the different stages and then they just separate and so four of them have gone into this side and four have gone onto this side and then two cells have been formed and these are called two new daughter cells. So daughter cells are genetically identical because if you look at it they were four, two blues and two reds. So two blues and two reds. Now here also we have two blues and two reds. So daughter cells are genetically identical to parent cells, same kind and number of chromosomes. Then mitosis occurs where? In the body cells. Wherever there is growth, wherever there is repair, wherever there is replacement. So mitosis occurs in the liver, in the heart, in the skin, in the stomach. And every organism has its own unique number of chromosomes. Humans have 46. This is called the diploid number or the total number of chromosomes in a somatic. Somatic means a body cell. Diploid means two sets and is written as 2n. So everybody has to be clear how we write it. 2n. So 2n in humans would be 2n is equal to 46 which is 23 pairs and n will be 23 n will be called then haploid it won't be called diploid anymore so 2n will be diploid and n will be haploid now we talk of the final products of mitosis somatic cells in your body have two sets of chromosomes and they're called diploid so mitosis will occur only in the body cells or we call this the somatic cells Meiosis will only take place. Now this is another type of cell division and this is also called reduction division. Why reduction division? Because number of chromosomes is going to be reduced. So and this only happens in the formation of gametes which are sex cells and these are the sperm and the eggs and only have one set, one of each pair, one set of chromosomes and they will be called haploid or they will be called N. Diploid is 2N. Haploid is N. Now let's look at the two different types of cell division. One is called mitosis which takes place in your body cells and other is meiosis. Please get the spelling right. M-E-I-O-S-I-S. So here now in meiosis this is only going to take place in the ovaries and the testes in the humans which are the reproductive organs. We are not talking of the plants as yet. And what actually ultimately happens is that this is one of the parent cells duplication takes place then again two cells are formed and then the final cell division results in four cells now you can see here the two cells are genetically identical to what now here you only have one of each pair so here we had four here we only have two in each so basically what had to happen here the four had to become eight here 
and then they separate and then 4 and 4 here and then 4 and 4 here so this is what is mitosis but in meiosis what happens there were 4 originally and they become 8 fine and then now they are what 4 in here and 4 in here and then 2 in each so actually there are now 4 plus 4 8 and 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is also 8 so in meiosis what happens is 4 genetically different daughter cells are formed and these are called gametes. Gametes are also called sex cells and these are haploid. So please be careful about what is mitosis and what is meiosis. Now if you look at mitosis in humans, the original cell, parent cell, whether it's a skin cell or a stomach cell has 46 chromosomes. Now the DNA must replicate and this one cell will have 92 chromatids. So the 46 have now become 92. It's still one cell. And then this cell divides and we have two cells now and 46 and 46 in each. Now all these cells have gone finished. So the original parent cell is gone now. We have two daughter cells. These are called daughter cells. And these are genetically identical because they have the same chromosome number and genetics is carried on the chromosomes. So the original, the original 46 chrom cell is gone now. And now we have two cells. So cell division has taken place. And the process of cell division in which we have genetically identical cells is called mitosis. And it takes place in all your body organs. It takes place in the skin and it takes place in the stomach. It takes place in the intestine. Wherever new cells have to be formed and the old cells have either died or something like that has happened. But let's look at now meiosis. Now in meiosis 46 chromosomes are present in the parent cell and it does divide into 92. So it does DNA replication does take place and chromosomes uh, replicate and the chromosome number doubles. And then there is a first meiotic division. So this is called meiosis 1. In meiosis 1, we have 46 in each. And then we have meiosis 2. And then what do we have? We ultimately have 4 cells. And each of the cells now have 23 chromosomes. So here now we have 4 cells in meiosis. And this meiosis is only going to take place in the ovary, in the female, and in the testes in the male. Now let's talk about the role of mitosis. The role of mitosis is number one, we talk of growth. Growth we mean what? Growth of plants, growth of animals, growth of humans. When you were in class six, you were a little kid, short in height. Now you've grown up, you're taller. You maybe you put on weight as well. So how has it, how has it happened? How has your bones grown? How have your muscles grown? How has your skin grown? It has grown because new cells have been added. We can't have your cells if you are originally born with say 10 million cells and now we can't have the same 10 million cells just growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. No, that can't happen because the surface area to volume ratio of the cell must remain the same. The surface area to volume ratio of the cell must remain the same. So what you need to understand is that when you grow, new cells need to be added. So that can only happen by mitosis and please remember growth not of humans only but growth of plants, growth of a tree, growth of a, you plant a seed and the seed, seedlings come out and there's a little baby plant and that has been because there has been mitosis in the plant cells. So number one growth, growth everywhere. Then repair of damaged tissue and I give you an example of like if a person has had an appendix surgery. So we cut the skin, the doctor cuts the skin, the muscle takes out the appendix and then stitches you up. And that repair, how does the skin heal? How do the muscles heal? How do all the different tissues heal in which they have now stitched it all up? That has to happen by mitosis. Just like you cut yourself with a knife and then after some time that skin heals and you left a scar. That healing has taken place by mitosis. Repair of damaged tissue. And there's an MCQ on it which says repair of damaged cell and that is which is wrong. But because you didn't remember repair of damaged tissue. Please remember cell cannot be repaired. 
And number three, we talk about the replacement of worn out cells. Now, of course, the first example which would come to your mind is replacement of uh, red blood cells. Everyday red blood cells die. New ones have to be formed in your bone marrow and then they have to be thrown into the bloodstream. So, worn out cells have to be replaced. This is replacement of worn out cells. So this is what we need to understand is the third point of the role of mitosis. And number fourth is asexual reproduction. Now what do we mean by asexual reproduction? Just like uh, you want to grow a potato crop. So you take a potato, you cut it up into pieces and you plant the potato in the soil. Asexual reproduction. Now how is this potato going to grow? It's just going to grow by asexual reproduction. It's just going to grow into a plant. Mitosis. No sexual reproduction is involved in it. That's a totally different thing. I'm not talking about that as yet. What about, for instance, you want to plant uh, some grass in your lawn. You've just planted a new lawn. You've just dug up the soil, put some new fertilizer. You want to put in a new lawn. So what you do is just plant some grass plants at a little distance. And after some days, you just water it and it's all grown. Now, how is it grown? This is asexual reproduction. You like a certain plant, you take a cutting from uh, your nanny's house and you plant it in your house and it starts to grow there. Asexual reproduction, cuttings. So please remember asexual reproduction is all and all nothing but mitosis. There's no other cell division involved in it. There's no gametes involved in it. There's no male gamete, there's no female gamete, there's no fertilization. It's just you've taken a cutting. We've taken a little grass plant, we've planted it and it starts to grow. We just water it and the roots start to grow and the shoots start to grow. So asexual reproduction. Please understand the role of mitosis. Now let's look at sexual reproduction. The original cell in any male human being cell is 46 chromosomes. In a female it's also 46 chromosomes. Now where will it happen? In the ovaries, meiosis will take place. And the female gamete will be formed, we'll do this detail later on, which will have 23 chromosomes. Similarly, in the testes of the male, the male gamete will be formed and this will be called a sperm. And this will be called an ovum. Now, when the sperm and the ovum fuse, what is formed is one cell. And this one cell has a special name, it's called a zygote. And this will have 46 chromosomes. Now this is the beginning of every organism, every human being, every animal, every plant. A zygote is the original cell. And this is what is mentioned in the Quran as well. That the every human being started from one drop. And that drop is actually the zygote. Which of course we didn't know then but now we know it with microscopical studies. So... The zygote is this one cell. Now this zygote with on the 46 chromosomes is the master plan, is the syllabus of this human being. Will this human being develop into a male or a female? Will this human being be so much tall? What will be the color of the skin? What will be the color of the eyes? What will be the color of his hair? Will his hair be straight or curly? Everything is written on these, the syllabus. I always say this is the syllabus, like you have your syllabus for your O-level biology. You have syllabus for your A-level biology, which is totally different. But this is the syllabus for this human being. And this, of course, this cell now will divide by mitosis, form two cells, and then four cells, and then eight cells, and so on and so forth, and form a ball of cells. And then this will develop into a human being. So the point of the syllabus which you have is define sexual reproduction as a process involving the fusion of haploid nuclei to form a diploid zygote to form a diploid zygote and the production of genetically dissimilar offspring actually if the if a couple has four sons i mean four of them are different because different uh, chromosomes have joined together in the zygote and different combination of alleles has occurred so they are dissimilar a couple has four daughters, they're all going to be different, maybe difference in height, maybe difference in uh, hair texture, maybe different slight difference in hair color as well, because we have different alleles, alternative form of a gene. 
this we will be discussing later on so i won't go into the details now but you just have to know what happens in sexual reproduction now this is of course the e part of the syllabus which i have just covered and now i need to go back on to the b part of the syllabus now i want to discuss the b part of the syllabus it says define asexual reproduction as a process resulting in the production of genetically identical offsprings from one parent and then it says the very important part of the syllabus it describe one named commercially important application of asexual reproduction in plants now this is a little difficult and some of you do not study this very carefully what we need to understand is that there is a certain kind of potato which i need in large numbers like maybe i i want to supply it to kfc or to mcdonald and i want to supply them one type of potato and it's always got to be this one type it can't be any different the color the flavor everything has to be the same so i have these original potatoes which i have somehow got that this is the best type and then i need lots of the same potato so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take this potato i am going to cut it up into pieces and then i'm going to plant a piece of this potato in the soil and what am i going to get i'm going to get a plant which is going to be exactly the same plant from which these potatoes were harvested and the potatoes that develop on this plant will be exactly the same as this original potato now why is this important this is a very important commercial application because we want the same fries must taste the same in all of the mcdonalds all of the kfcs so we want one def definite type of potato because it's good in flavor because it doesn't absorb a lot of oil because it's a certain color so this is the named commercially important application of so having this potato and then growing large numbers would of course result in asexual reproduction of course there is uh, they'll all be clones they'll all be clones they'll all be genetically the same and so of course there is a disadvantage is that if they are not resistant to a certain disease all of them will die and that's what happened in the irish potato famine the entire potato crop of ireland was destroyed and they had a lot of economic problems so if you have one genetic type of potato and if there is a disease if there is a disease of that type of crop then of course all the crop will be destroyed now another example is that of sugar cane now if you look at sugar cane sugar cane is why is it a good example is because all you have to do is you have to cut up the sugar cane into pieces and plant this sugar cane in the soil and it will grow now what will be good about which sugar cane the one which is tall one which is tall one which has a lot of uh, sugar content one which has a lot of juice in it so if we have one or two of these sugar canes all we have to do is just cut them up into pieces and put them into the soil and grow them so this is what you need to understand about the commercially important application and this is what has to be understood is that those plants which can be grown by cuttings every plant can't be grown by cuttings please remember that but that one plant would have to have some good characteristics and then is just we're going to have more and more copies of those made so this is the b part of the syllabus which i have discussed and the example is that of a potato and example of that of a sugar cane so i finish this part of the chapter here now this is the video and i will continue this chapter in the second video so thank you for now